All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to back up the data on your Synology NAS to Synology's own C2 backup, and give it a comparison between AWS Deep Glacier, which is in a lot of ways set up as a polar opposite, but can be good for different people's use cases. All right, so first off, what is C2? Synology C2 is basically a service that allows you to back up certain files on your NAS to Synology's own cloud, and they're encrypted at your NAS, meaning that you control everything. Even in the worst case scenario, where Synology's cloud gets breached, all of your data is already encrypted there. So there's not too much to worry about there. So C2 is in a lot of ways, just an extension of your NAS. It works using hyper backup. And honestly, it's just like having another NAS in another person's house, backing up your data. It is pretty seamless. You can access the data via web browser and you even get file versioning. It's just incredibly easy to set up and restore. But one downside, you are kind of locked into the Synology ecosystem. So I've said this before, RAID is not a backup. You need to have a secondary offsite backup of data that you really want access to. Because you really just don't know what could happen to your local NAS. From fire, theft, or really anything could all of a sudden render all of your data useless. And so you want to have, for the really important files, a complete offsite backup. And that's where the cloud is really great. So Synology C2 has some pretty decent pricing for home users. So there are essentially two different plans here. There's plan one, which is really designed for home users, and plan two, which is really designed for businesses or people who have a ton of files. And they're overall pretty decently competitive rates. Once you start including the fact that you can download as much as you'd like, and you get file versioning. So I would say you don't really have to download every bit of data on your NAS. For me, I've got a ton of archived recordings that if I lost would not be the end of the world, but there are a ton of photos on there that I really have to maintain. And so you have to look through and figure out what files you're really willing to pay for to make sure you always have them. And so for a lot of people, that's probably under hundred gigabytes. And so for $10 a year, to have guaranteed access to these with version control just in case something happens is a pretty good deal, I'd say. Then within tier one, you can go all the way up to a terabyte, which only costs 60 bucks a year, which is pretty competitive given the fact that these archives are actually pretty accessible and really easy to use. Then for businesses, they've got plan two, which is you pay by the terabyte. This gives you hourly backup, same encryption, but it also gives you dedupe and customized data retentions. So you can start archiving out certain files you don't need backed up. This is good for businesses who have certain obligations. This plan I think is hard to justify for certain businesses because Amazon Deep Glacier has incredibly cheap pricing, but it's really hard to use. There are Synology apps that allow you to access it, but the way that it works is clunky and they are not going to help you out with it. There are stories of people who have accidentally spent thousands of dollars trying to work with Glacier because they requested a ton of files and you could be without your data for hours. But for businesses who have IT support who can really use Glacier well and they just really want a cold offsite backup, Glacier becomes a better option in some cases. However, for local data, that's what's called hot data. You're going to want multiple versions of these files and things like that and be able to restore in seconds, which is something that this plan really offers. So you've got to go through and really figure out what your use cases are and what kind of stuff you need with your data. So AWS Deep Glacier has an insane pricing. It is incredibly cheap. For Amazon Deep Glacier, which is basically long-term archival stuff, you can pay $1 a month per terabyte, which is an incredibly good deal. However, with Deep Glacier, access takes hours and hours and you have to use their API and really know how to use it. It also is incredibly expensive to download your files. For more regular backups, I would probably recommend going into the regular Glacier pricing, which ends up being about $4 a month per terabyte. So that's where actually C2 can be pretty price competitive with it. You pay a little bit extra on the front end, but it's totally free to download as much data as you like, and it's a lot quicker to get back up and running. Plus, it really is a very good extension of your Synology, meaning if you're already in the ecosystem, it's incredibly easy to use. Plus, if you're working with a ton of duplicated files, the dedupe 
could actually pretty easily drop this price down to where they're essentially competitive because you'd be deduplicating a lot of your data, therefore not paying for it twice. And in the future, I will be doing a video on how to back up to Amazon Glacier. All right, and so now let's go through and set up a backup to C2 on our Synology NAS. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is log into DSM and go into Package Center. And you're going to want to download Hyper Backup, which I've already downloaded here. So I've already talked about Hyper Backup in the past, and it's got this additional option right here for Synology C2 and Cloud Backup. So we're gonna select that and click Next. And it's gonna take us to sign into our Synology account. And new Synology users get a 30-day free trial, which is pretty nice. All right, and so now I'm just gonna go through and get my free trial. All right, and so once you've gone through and set that up with your credit card information and whatnot, you now get directed back to Synology. So we're just gonna go ahead and click Next. And now we're gonna select the files that we would like to sync. This works just like every other hyper backup. So we're gonna select the general folder that I've been using for tutorials and any other applications you'd like to back up. This is another great resource that Synology C2 has. It is because it is built by Synology, it can also incredibly easily back up all of your packages, not just your files. Now here you can set everything up. You're definitely going to want to enable client-side encryption, but make sure to have a good password that you can restore from. You can also limit the amount of bandwidth this uses. So if it's backing up, it's not slowing down everybody else's connections, which is really good because generally backups can take a long time and it doesn't really matter because they're backups. And you don't want everybody else's productivity being slowed down. Then you can set up when your Synology will be backed up. And I would recommend putting this at a time where not a ton of people are gonna be accessing it. It just makes it easier and it will be slightly slower. And just click apply. It's gonna give you the warning about the encryption key and it's gonna automatically download it for us. Just in case we have it, Make sure to put that in a safe place so that way if anything does happen and you forget your password, you will still be able to use that to de-encrypt the backup. And now, just say backup now. All right, and so now it's just gonna go through and do that backup for us. All right, and so that's it. This was a pretty small folder so it didn't take too long to upload, but generally you are going to be limited by the upload speed of your network. So this first backup especially if you've got like a terabyte of files, can take a very long time depending on your connection. So now let's go ahead and check it out. All we gotta do is click service provider and it's going to take us into the web portal. This is a really great way to gain access to all of your files and see the backups. All right, and so here we've got a really nice user interface that shows us our usage statistics and shows us all the backups. So we can even browse it. And here's where we're gonna to have to enter that encryption key that we set up. You can either enter the password or that encryption key. You can also view these using Hyper Backup Explorer. And just like that, you can view everything. And if you need to, download it. This can even be used if you need to download a file and you're away from your network and don't have access to your NAS for whatever reason. Maybe your internet's out and you really need a file you can just grab them here, which can be a lifesaver in certain circumstances. And so just like that, it's really incredibly easy to use. Then later on, you can even go through and add or remove things from the backup. Just go into task settings, and say we wanna also back up everybody's home folders. Just click homes, okay, and do a backup. And now all those user folders are now going to be backed up to Synology C2. It's overall a really nice way, and it just works so easily. All right, well, those are the basics for how to set up Synology's C2 backup to back up all the different files on your Synology NAS to the cloud, meaning you always have connectivity to them. I hope you found this helpful. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.